Hey everybody, it's Larry at Crazy Horse Dolly. As you can see here, we have our core kit pattern that has been uh, double taped to a piece of three-quarter plywood. And what I'm doing here is I'm pointing out all the little crosshairs on the pattern where you need to take an awl or a punch and uh, make an impression in the work. And this will help you to line up everything and where to drill your holes and all that kind of stuff. You can see this one in the middle is not in the crosshair, but on the edge of the crosshair. And that's pretty critical. We'll check that out later. Um, <clears throat> but you have eighth inch holes, quarter inch uh, marks, and uh, half inch marks. One at each uh, corner. You also, on the pattern, you have a full size uh, collar pattern. That center hole will be about an inch and an eighth. Uh, that's going to be fairly uh, accessible for an inch, inch and an eighth drill. Uh, it's actually 1.05. You're just not going to find that. Um, the triangle that you see here that's on the pattern as well, it's also full size. You just need to cut it out. You'll need four of those. And there's a special edge on that long edge that we'll look at a little later. Okay. I'm going to set this camera up. We're going to take this pattern off of this piece. And uh, I, by the way, I cut this with just a skill saw and a shooter board. And here you can see where all of the indicator marks are that we put in with our scratch all or our punch, whatever is available to you. And uh, we're going to drill those 1 8 inch holes. Now there will be three 1 8 inch holes for each bracket. You see the sample on the background where those uh, gussets meet the base. There are three screws in there and that's what I'm drilling right now. Then we're going to drill the half inch holes. Make sure that you get the most dangerous bit in the building to do this with, as you can see. Uh, this is what I did. And uh, drill those six, one at each corner. This is for stem mount. Now if you have a uh, plate mount caster, then don't worry about these holes. You can just put it on there. Now here I'm rounding the edge. I'm just rounding it over. I keep a 1 8 radius bit um, just to ease edges on things around here. Uh, I don't ever change it um, out. I might change the depth a little here and there depending on what it is. But I go ahead and route all the edges. And I'm sanding it <clears throat> elbow grease. I'm using a uh, sander block here that you can see uh, I made myself. These things last 10 or 12 years or longer. Um, just made out of a 3 by 21 sanding belt and a scrap piece of plywood. Here I flipped over to the bottom side of the base and I am marking the three holes, where the three holes are lined up. This is, allows me to be able to pinpoint the center when I uh, am putting a uh, nail in there to uh, stabilize my position. I'm going to go ahead and put my casters on. Uh, I like to work with it with the casters on. It gets it up off of the table. Helps to manipulate the piece. I have one of the braces here. I'm going to lock down a couple of these uh, casters so that this thing's not moving all over the place. And you see me glance over where my left hand is right there is where we were talking about earlier where that indicator mark is on the edge of that circle. That circle represents the tubing. So you don't want this past that. You want it splitting that indicator mark that you put on there. And uh, you can line up with the other indicator marks that are on there. Now here you see the screw we're using. It's just an installation screw. Two and a half inches, uh, number eight I think it is, uh, with a type 17 drill point. And we're going to put that in. And this one here, we're happy with the position of it, looking at our indicator marks that we put on there previously. Everything looks good, so we're just going to go ahead and drill and uh, get that put in place. We'll use that as the basis for all the others where the center is. We're going to get our piece of tubing, put it in there. We're going to put that up on there, get our opposing member, and put it on there. Line it up with our indicator marks. 
there will be four of them, and you just split those marks on each side, and you're in position. You're in the right place. Tack it a little bit. Uh, it looks good. We're going to put a screw in that. We'll only put one screw in this one, and the rest of them, uh, the other two as well. And then we'll, uh, when we're happy with everything, we'll go ahead and tighten everything up with the rest of the screws. Now here you see the shape of this. Uh, this is done with a CNC, but you don't need to exactly shape it like that, but it does need to be a 90 degree angle. But you see the important thing here is that you have some sort of indention here that will work as a shoulder against that pipe. That happened to be a one inch flute cutter that I had around here. I put it on the shaper and I ran all these things. It worked out perfect. Really, really nice. Uh, but you can do it with a dado blade or you can do it with a V-groove blade or router bit or uh, you can even do it with the saw if you want to. You just need a shoulder for the um, pipe or the tubing to rest against to keep it from moving side to side. Alright, we got everything. We, look, we like our look. We've only got one screw and uh, three of these, so we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the screws in and tighten this up. And once this is done, we will put the collar on. And when you put the collar on, you want to look at your uh, top side there where the tubing is coming out of those four braces. And if you got one that's snug, that's the one you want to put the first screw in. So you just kind of look at that a little bit, see which one's which. And then you get your collar, which this one was cut on CNC, but you can see there are four pilot holes in there. And... Um, you can uh, cut this out as a square first, then mark where your holes go and uh, drill out with your bit in the center and then cut it out with a um, jigsaw or bandsaw or whatever you prefer if you got a router with a trammel or whatever. Anyway, you're going to take that first one, you're going to put it in there. A tip here would be to uh, tilt that screw, the head of the screw, towards the pipe. And when you uh, there's just whatever little least bit of difference there is uh, in vertical, it will pull itself towards the, pull the brace rather, towards the pipe uh, and the tubing. So you get a real snug fit and not much chance of that coming out. Gravity usually takes care of it, but if it's a little snug and doesn't rattle around, it's just a little better. All right, all this looks pretty cool. Well, what we need to do is put the rest of our kit in and the rest of the kit is nothing more than the now famous rubber dome molded to our threaded rod, a washer, and our quick adjust knob. You notice that that is not a round hole in that knob. That's because it was drilled, tapped, and then an eccentric drill was put through at that angle right there. So let's demonstrate that a little bit. You see it slips right on there, but if I straighten it out, it snugs it up. Your little set screw right there, always hand tighten that. Never use a wrench on it or you'll gall the threads on that. But you can set that up. You just insert it in there. Sorry about the top of that being cut off, but you get the idea. And um, that's pretty much it. What you're going to get with the kit is going to be the dome, the threaded rod, the quick adjust knob, the washer, and then you're going to furnish everything else, which is the casters and plywood. Stuff laying around the shop that you got already. Uh, so for about a hundred bucks, you can go on the crazyhorsedolly.com, order you a kit, that stuff that you can't get at a hardware store, and then go down to the hardware store and get the stuff you can.